Are you thinking of making a move to Bend, Oregon? Or maybe you live in Bend or Redmond, anywhere in Central Oregon, and you are wondering what the heck is going on with the real estate market? Where are prices at? Where is inventory? Well, today I'm gonna to give you an update and tell you all the numbers for Bend and Redmond for the month of May, 2024. Hi, my name is Nora Spangler. I'm a realtor in Bend, Oregon with Stellar Realty Northwest. If you want to stay in touch and stay up to date with everything going on in Bend, thinking about moving here maybe, you just want to know what's going on with real estate, hit that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date. Pending home sales in the city of Bend, single family homes only, 193 homes went pending last month in May. And that's up about 13% from April, but down about 4% from a year ago. Last month, we only closed 160 home sales, single family homes in the city of Bend. That's down about 19% from the month before, and it's down 17% from a year ago. So how does that relate to like a few years ago? Where is this in the range of a normal year? Well, I can tell you it is very low. So let's look at this graph for a second. So let's get a little historical background here and context to what's going on now. This is an annualized chart. So it's the annual 12 month numbers. That's why the numbers are higher. So pre-pandemic, we were close to 3000 homes per year sold. And then at the peak, we were almost at 3,500. And you can see how far that line has dropped down and now we are only around less than 2000 homes per year so that we're about a third off um, of what a typical year would be and really that is because of those high interest rates and prices going up but i think more likely it's those high interest rates that are keeping people from purchasing so if those drop down i think we will see a huge increase in number of homes sold and just general activity in our market. And a little bit of good news, we have 346 new listings come on the market in May. That's up 19% from the previous month and up 11% from a year ago. So as far as new listings coming on the market, we're moving in the right direction and we are gaining ground with inventory. Now with interest rates hovering around 7%, you might be thinking, that everybody is buying homes with cash. Well, of those 160 homes sold last month, 57 of them were bought with cash. That's about 35%, which definitely is higher than normal. We usually have about 20 to 25% of the home sales in any given month or year um, with cash. 35% purchase with cash is definitely higher and yeah, that is just the effect of the high interest rates right now. If you're wondering what's going on with interest rates, mortgage interest rates, well, unfortunately, they're kind of hanging right around that 7% range. The Fed met and decided to keep their interest rate the same. They didn't lower it. So it's unlikely that interest rates are going to move very much. So we're going to stay probably around 7%. Most of the experts are looking at staying in that six and a half to seven percent interest rate range for quite some time. If you're liking this video, if it's helpful and educational, would you give it a thumbs up and then hit that subscribe button? Then you'll get notified every week when I put out a new video. But on the reverse side of that, take heart because that means 65% of the majority of homes we're still purchased with loans, even at the high interest rate. So it's not impossible to do. If you need a creative lender, a great lender, I have a couple really wonderful people that I work with. So reach out to me. I'd be happy to suggest someone that can help you understand what's going on and what you might qualify with the high interest rates today. Inventory. How many homes do we have to sell? Well, we have more than we have had in quite some time. 605 homes were left on the market at the end of May, and that's up about 22% from April and up about 25% from a year ago. So we're moving in the right direction, getting more inventory for the buyers to choose from, but we are still in a seller's market because we only have about four months of inventory and we would need five to six months at least, probably another three or 400 homes on the market um, at the end of any given month in order to kind of switch over to a buyer's market. I'm gonna give you some tips. And if you're a buyer in this market, 
Here, here's what I would do if I were buying a home. I would look for homes that have been price reduced for one thing. I would also look for days on market for homes that have been sitting for a while. And that could just be maybe even around a month. And the sellers are getting nervous. They have plans. They need to go somewhere. They may be under contract on another home and they need their home to sell. So those are two categories of homes that I would give more attention. And I would also try to look above my price point. If you look a little bit, maybe 25, even 50,000 above your price point, you might find a home that's been sitting on the market for a while and be able to make a lower than list price offer and get a home that you really like. Days on market, how long is it taking to sell homes? Well, in the city of Bend, our days on market, median days on market, was 11 for last month. And that's down just one day from the 12 days that it was in April. And that's just three days higher than we were last year. So we're pretty much in line with last year. And that's typically the way our spring and then summer market, we will drop down to sometimes single digit um, days on market. So be ready for that. If you're trying to buy a home in this later spring or this summer market, you're probably going to have to move pretty quickly to get a desirable home. And now here we are at the new median sale price for single family homes in the city of Bend. We went up. So last month we had gone down from the previous month. 740 was April's number and we popped up to $770,000 in the month of May. That's up about 4% from April and we're still up about 3% year over year. Now, while Bend is struggling with pending sales and closed sales, Redmond seems to be moving right along. Redmond's pending sales last month were up 10% month over month and up 54% from a year ago. So the Redmond market is just really taking off. And it's no wonder with the high prices here in Bend that people are often choosing to live in Redmond. It's just a quick 20, 25 minute drive if you have to commute. So many of us work from home that it really might not matter to you and you can come to Bend whenever you like. It's really just an easy, quick drive down Highway 97. Redmond's closed sales were up 4% from the previous month and up 11% from a year ago. Now Redmond's inventory is not doing as well as Bend. They only had 97 homes hit the market last month, and that number is down 34% from the previous month and down about 13% year over year. Redmond's total inventory of homes was down about 7% month over month, but still up 16% from last year. At the current rate that Redmond is selling homes, they have about three and a half months of inventory, so that is still a pretty strong seller's market in Redmond. For Redmond, the median days on market was 14 last month, and that's down 11 days from the month before and down 18 days from a year ago. So Redmond is really picking up the pace and homes are selling quickly. And the new median sale price for single family homes in Redmond is $558,000. That's up just about 2% from the month before, but it's up 10% year over year. So Redmond's home prices are shooting up much faster than Bend right now. And I think that has to do with the price points in Bend are just out of reach for so many people that they are finding Redmond as a great alternative location. So let's wrap things up. What do I see happening? We have, we're almost at the end of the spring market heading into summer. So I think still, even though it will be subdued, um, we are still going to see an increase in buyer activity in the market, which could mean prices go even higher. Um, I don't want to see that happen. It might happen. And I think interest rates are just, you know, maybe there'll be a little volatility in interest rates, but they're probably going to remain right around that 7%. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful that people take the time um, to educate themselves on the market. And if I can help in any way, just reach out to me. I'm here to answer your questions and to help you.